Hello and welcome back to Grant Me. Today we're going to be talking about the University of Toronto. This is video one in this series and this video is part of our Ultimate University Guide series. If you're wondering what that is, this is basically a series where we tell you about how to get into Canada's top 20 universities and on top of that we provide you with some general facts about their programs, what they're most well known for, some applications, tips and tricks, and obviously the eligibility requirements. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, let's discuss some general facts about the University of Toronto. As you can probably imply by its name, the location is within the Greater Toronto Area. Many people don't know is the fact that U of T actually has three different campuses. So Campus 1 is located in Mississauga, Campus 2 is located in St. George, which is right in the heart of Toronto, and Campus 3 is located in Scarborough. In terms of its rankings, U of T has some very, very impressive stats actually. Uh, within the global ranking of academic subjects in the year of 2018, U of T was among the top 10 in the world uh, within many different subjects. And those were psychology in which they placed second, fourth place in medical technology, sixth in human and biological sciences, seventh in automation and control, eighth in sociology, ninth in management, and 10th in public health. This is also worldwide as well, actually, because U of T has ranked in the top 50 of 35 different subjects, and that's actually more than any other university, except for Harvard, Stanford, Michigan, and it's tied with the University of California, Berkeley. So from a global aspect, U of T is already quite an impressive school. And in Canada, meanwhile, a U of T is ranked first, or it's tied in 29 different subjects, which puts it at the top of the list. It is more than any other Canadian post-secondary institution, making it one of Canada's top universities. In terms of standout programs, a wide variety of different programs you can choose from, but there are three that is most well known for because of the various unique aspects of it. So number one is Global Health, and this is a program that really allows you to explore socioeconomic and cultural factors of different world health challenges. But something that's really unique about this program is that you will actually be provided with research opportunities within labs and hospitals across downtown Toronto, which is a really unique aspect of this. It's very nice. You get some hands-on experience. And speaking of hands-on experience, with within the forensics program, which is offered at the Mississauga campus, they actually have a house where they recreate crime scenes for study. So you can get some hands-on experience with that as well and really kind of see what the job is all about. In terms of business administration, their program mainly focuses on teaching economics and management, but a nice aspect of that is that it can include up to a year of paid employment, also making it a very viable choice for those interested in business. But in today's video, we're just gonna be discussing the eligibility requirements of the University of Toronto. So we're gonna be discussing in more detail aspects such as the averages we need to get in, your general admission requirements, and your English language requirements. So without further ado, let's get right into it. Let's talk averages. So if you want to get into the University of Toronto, 85% is the required average, but with many other post-secondary institutions all across Canada, the actual entering rate varies from this 85% requirement. Each program does have a different average, so make sure you check those out if you can online, but the average entering rate at the University of Toronto as a whole is about 91% or over, which makes it a very competitive university to apply to. In terms of your general admission requirements for Canadian students, this may vary depending on your province, but a typical requirement uh, needs you to have your provincial high school diploma. You need to have six grade 12 academic courses, including English. And if you are going for programs with a calculus prerequisite, then you will need to have taken calculus for that. In terms of your English language requirements, this can be very confusing for some people, but if you are unsure of whether or not you meet these requirements, I would highly suggest you go to McGill's English language proficiency page, and over there they will explain who does and who does not need their proof of English proficiency. But if you're not sure that you don't have it, or you know for a fact you don't have it, there are 10 different ways of getting this. So we'll go through all of them. Number one is the Cambridge Assessment C1 Advanced or C2 Proficiency Test. Number two is your Canadian Academic English Language Assessment or your CAEL, which includes the online version of it. Number three is the Canadian Test of English for Scholars and Trainees, also known as CANTEST. Number four is the Caribbean Examinations Council English Courses. Number five is the Duolingo English Test uh, with the minimum requirement of an overall score of 120 or higher. Number six is your English language language C diagnosis and assessment slash certificate of proficiency in English, which is also known as your ELDA or COPE. Uh, another alternative for number seven is 
these GCSEs, IGCSEs, GCEs, and AICE English courses. Um, number eight is for all the international baccalaureate students over there. So if you're within the IB program, your minimum requirement is a score of at least four, whether that be predicted or final, within the higher or standard level English A literature or English A language and literature courses. You have to keep in mind with this that HL English B is not acceptable. Your final results should be sent directly to U of T through the International Baccalaureate Organization and you can make this request online at www.ibo.org. And predicted results, if you don't have your full results yet, should be sent by your school. Another alternative is the International English Learning Testing System or IELTS and you can use their academic module and their minimum requirement is an overall band of 6.5 you cannot have a band below 6.0 if you want more information on this the best place to check is your website at www.ielts.org you can also get your English language proficiency through the Ontario College of Applied Arts and Technology another alternative is internet based tests including home editions and you can get more details in terms of the full details and required scores through the U of T website because there are many, many different ways that you can meet this requirement. That concludes today's video about the University of Toronto where we discussed the eligibility requirements, the grade requirements, and your English language requirements. If you're interested in more information, I would highly suggest that you go over to their website because I can't cover everything in a single 10 minute video. If you're also interested in uh, seeing what schools you should apply to or you're not really sure about whether or not you're eligible uh, for your dream schools, I would highly recommend you go down to the link in our description. We have a very helpful admissions eligibility quiz for you where you can put in like your extracurriculars and your grades and see if you're eligible for your dream school. So if you're really unsure about whether or not you should apply for certain universities or not, I would highly recommend that you go to the link in our description and check that out. It's a very useful tool. But with that being said, that concludes today's video. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned for some new updates.